Hello and welcome. For this logarithmic equation to be defined, then we know that x must be greater than 0 because the base of a logarithm must be positive. We also know that x must not be equal to 1 because 1 cannot be the base of a logarithm. And then finally, we know that x must not be equal to 2. Because when x is equal to 2, then this denominator is going to be log to base 2 of 3 minus 2. Of course, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. And log to base 2 of 1 is equal to 0. And we cannot divide by 0. Now, having said this, let us go on to solve this logarithmic equation. Of course, the first thing we are going to do is to get rid of this fraction on the left-hand side of the equation. And how are we going to do that? We are going to cross-multiply. So we have 1 over 1. When we cross-multiply, we have that log to base x of 3 minus x is equal to log to base x squared of 8 minus 3x minus x squared. Now, the next thing we are going to do is that we will change the base of this logarithm on the right-hand side from base x squared to base x to match this term. When we apply the change of base logarithm to this right-hand side, then this is going to be equal to log to base x. x is the new base of 8 minus 3x minus x squared divided by log to base x of the old base, which is x squared. So here we have x squared. Now let us look at this denominator. Remember that log to base a of a to power b is equal to b. So that simply means that log to base x of x to power 2 is equal to 2. So this whole denominator is equal to the number 2. So we have 2 in the denominator. And of course, on the left-hand side, we still have log to base x of 3 minus x. Now, to get rid of this denominator, let us multiply through this equation by 2. And of course, when we do this, we have that 2 times log to base x of 3 minus x is equal to, of course, this is going to take care of that, leaving us with log to base x of 8 minus 3x minus x squared. Now, let us apply the power rule of logarithms to this left-hand side. That is the rule that says that we can take up 2, that is this multiplier, to become the exponent of 3 minus x. When we do this, on the left-hand side, we have log to base x of 3 minus x squared is equal to log to base x of 8 minus 3x minus x squared. Now, when you look at this equation, you will see that log to base x of this quantity is equal to log to base x of that quantity. So that simply means that 3 minus x squared is equal to 8 minus 3x minus x squared. And of course, when we open this bracket, we have 3 squared, which is 9. 2 times 3 times minus x. That is going to give us minus 6x. And minus x squared, which is plus x squared. And of course, this is equal to 8 minus 3x minus x squared. Now, let us move these three terms over to the left-hand side. When we do that, we have x squared. Minus x squared goes over and becomes plus x squared. We have minus 6x. This comes over and becomes plus 3x. Then we have plus 9. This comes over and becomes minus 8. And of course, we are left with 0 on the left-hand side. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 
minus 6x plus 3x is minus 3x. And 9 minus 8 is plus 1. This is equal to 0. Now we can solve this quadratic equation by factorization. Since the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1, we are going to use the table method. The factors of 2x squared are x and 2x. And the factors of 1, of course, are 1 and 1. But since this is negative, let this be minus 1 and that minus 1. Of course, you know that minus 1 times minus 1 is still going to give us plus 1. Now, when we multiply this and this, we have minus x. And when we multiply this and that, we have minus 2x. And of course, minus 2x minus x is going to give us minus 3x. So factorizing the left-hand side of this equation gives us x minus 1 and 2x minus 1. And of course, this is equal to 0. And of course, from this equation, we have that either x minus 1 is equal to 0. From where x is equal to 1 or 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. From where 2x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1 over 2. So we have two values of x. We have that x is either equal to 1 or equal to half. But from these constraints, you see that x cannot be equal to 1. So we have that the value of x that satisfies this logarithmic equation is x equal to half. Now to check our answer, let us substitute half for x into the left-hand side of the original equation. We will evaluate the numerator and the denominator differently and then do the division after the evaluation. Of course, you remember that log to base x squared of this is the same as half times log to base x of 8 minus 3x minus x squared from our change of base. So when we substitute half for x here, we have half times log to base half of 8 minus 3 times half minus half squared. This is equal to half times log to be is half of 8 minus 3 times half is 3 over 2. And of course, half squared is 1 over 4. This is equal to half times log to be is half of now, 8 is the same as 32 over 4. 3 over 2 is the same as 6 over 4. And here we have 1 over 4. This is equal to half times log to be is half of, since they now have the same denominator, we can deal with the numerators. 32 minus 6 is 26. 26 minus 1 is 25. So here we have 25 over 4. Now let us apply the power rule of logarithms. We are going to take up this half to become the exponent of 25 over 4. And of course, when we do that, we have log to base half of 25 over 4 to the power half. And of course, you know that this simply means the square root of 25 over 4. So we have that the numerator is equal to log to base half of the square root of this. The square root of 25 over 4 is 5 over 2. And when we substitute half for x into the denominator, we have log to base half of 3 minus half. Of course, 3 is 6 over 2. So here we have log to base half of 6 over 2 minus 1 over 2. 6 minus 1 is 5. So this is equal to log to base half of 5 over 2. 
So we have that the denominator is equal to log to the half of 5 over 2. So finally, the numerator over the denominator is equal to this divided by that. And you can see that this is exactly equal to that. So this over this is equal to 1, which is exactly what we have on the right-hand side of the original equation. So this is the correct value of x that satisfies the logarithmic equation. And with that, we come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoy such content, please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a thumbs up to support the channel. It greatly helps out. Thanks for watching. And you can see more videos here.